What up guys, Fight Fiend Mix here coming at you with a new video. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day and checking it out. Uh, before I get started, I want to say uh, I hope everyone is doing well. I hope everyone is staying healthy and uh, following the orders, you know, whatever. Um, uh, staying home, the quarantine, and you know, not uh, not going out unless it's necessary. You're wearing your masks, washing your hands, all that shit. So I hope everyone is doing well and uh, healthy. So you guys can keep coming back and checking out my videos. Uh, but anyway. Uh, that being said, as promised, here is your uh, UFC 249 uh, co-main event and main event fight predictions. Now, uh, when I do these fight predictions, um, th there's, a, there's a saying that uh, is in the fight game, and I, I make sure to, to bring it up every time I do these fight predictions. Um, the saying goes, you're only as good as your last fight. Uh, when it comes to boxing, I think that's, that's pretty accurate. Uh, however, when we're talking about mixed martial arts, because... There's so much, uh, so many variables, and there's so many different ways you can lose. Um, you know, any guy can beat any guy on any given day. So um, their most recent fight isn't necessarily their best showing, and it may not be, you know, um, a really good indication of, of the fighter uh, or their, their skill or their, uh, you know, uh, endurance, uh, their, their fight level, I guess. So what I like to do when it comes to MMA fight predictions is I like to take a look at not just their most recent fight, but their three most recent fights. Uh, now, in this particular case, since I'm doing the co-main event and main event of uh, UFC 249, uh, three fights for each, we're talking about uh, three, six, 12 fights, uh, so I had to uh, to make some notes. You know, I may not look too professional, but fuck it, whatever, I'm not professional anyway. All right, so we're going to get started with the co-main event, which is uh, for the UFC Bantamweight title. Uh, current champion Henry Cejudo is going to be defending his title against former champion Dominic Cruz. Now... Um, this fight, I've kind of flip-flopped back and forth because uh, I'm actually a pretty big fan of both of these fighters. Uh, Dominic Cruz in particular, <clears throat> um, his first fight with uh, Joseph Benavides back at uh, WEC 42, I think in 2009, is in my top three favorite fights of all time. Uh, for those of you who have the UFC Fight Pass, I might suggest checking it out or looking for it on YouTube. It's not like a... Um, blood and guts type of fight or anything like that but it's very technical it's only three rounds because it's a non-title fight but it's non-stop action uh it's a pretty pretty dope ass fight it um in my opinion it shows how far the sport of mixed martial arts has come and uh, and how much how far the mixed martial artist has come like the mixed martial arts athlete has come and uh it's one of my favorite fights and i'll watch it you know over and over i never get tired of it it's a pretty good fight uh so that being said, we're going to take a look at Dominic Cruz's uh, three most recent fights, starting with the most recent, which was in December of 2016 against Cody Garbrandt. That fucking sucked. Um, he got his ass handed to him pretty bad, as you guys uh, may recall. And for five rounds, it was a five-round uh, unanimous decision. He lost. So um, having to sit through that, <laughs> having to revisit those five rounds again for the sake of this uh, you know, uh, prediction video uh, kind of sucked. But... You know what? He he uh he lost his belt. You know he he took his ass whooping uh, like a man. Um, I don't remember him if he made any excuses. Maybe he did make some excuses afterwards. But anyway, uh, the one before that is June of 2016 against Uriah Faber. Uh, he won that fight. Another unanimous decision. So he went the full five rounds. Uh, you might see a trend with uh, Dominic Cruz. A lot of his fights do go the uh, the distance. Uh, prior to that, a split decision win over TJ Dillashaw. This was after his long layoff, coming back and winning the title back. Um, now, if you believe Dominic Cruz, there's no such thing as ring rust. I don't know how true that is. I see, I think it's more, it's more, um, more visible, I think, in boxing that is, than it is in MMA. Um, he believes it's not true. I, I don't know how, how accurate that is. I don't know if I believe him there, frankly, but um, he's going to have to prove us all wrong again because his last fight was in 2016 in December and he's been out for a while. So who the fuck knows how he's going to look against Cejudo. Uh, so those were his last three fights. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, a loss, unanimous decision, December 2016. Uh, Uriah Faber, unanimous decision win on, in June of 2016. And then TJ Dillashaw, a split decision win in um, January of 2016. So we're going to move over on to the champion. Uh, his most recent fight uh, was in uh, June of 2019 against Marlon Moraes, a, a TKO victory. Um, that's where he won the vacant uh, bantamweight title. Now, 
Um, I am a fan also of, of Cejudo. As a matter of fact, I was at uh, UFC 227 when he uh, defeated Demetrius Johnson for the flyweight title in um, L.A. It was a uh, staple center. Uh, that was bananas. When when they announced and knew, oh my gosh, that freaking arena went crazy. And uh, it, it was pretty dope. I still have the, the, the ticket. It's on this poster here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's on this poster. But anyway, um, so um, that his most recent fight with Moraes, I think that showed... That really, really showed what Zehuda was made of because um, he um, th that was a tough fight. That was a tough fight. Uh, Marias was kicking the living crap out of his legs. Um, and I want to say, I think that was the, the fight where in the post-fight press conference, uh, Zehuda uh, came in <laughs> in a wheelchair. So uh, so that was serious. You know, he really, really had to... Um, like it, uh, the the few the first few rounds I actually gave to Marais and um, Zehuda, Zehuda basically... I mean, he, he, he hung in there, you know, of course, those early rounds, and uh, Marais wasn't able to take him out, and um, it, it, once, uh, once I think it was the, the second, towards the end of the second round, Zehudo really cranked it up to 11, and that cardio came in, and, you know, Marais started to uh, started to gas, started running a gas, and it wasn't looking too good, but that fight really, really showed a lot. Um, it showed the heart, it showed the courage, and it showed the perseverance of Sehudo to come back late in that fight to win that to win that fight. Ultimately, he won by a TKO, uh, and that was that was pretty dope. Also, he did win the uh, the UFC uh, bantamweight title, and only a handful of guys have won him in, uh, won titles in two different weight divisions, and he's one of them. So before that, we have. TJ Dillashaw once more uh, appears, makes a, an appearance on this list in January of 2019. Uh, There's where he defended his flyweight title. That was also a TKO. That was a, a pretty fast fight, actually. It ended in seconds in the, into the first round. So he didn't really take, you know, too much punishment, if any, at all. And uh, and that, that fight was uh, was pretty short. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a quick one. Uh, the one before that one was the... Um, uh, split decision victory over Demetrius Johnson uh, in uh, 2018, August of 2018. Uh, that fight also showed a lot of what um, was what's inside Sehud, though. Uh, that was a tough fight. It was a split decision, and you know there was a part of me that that thought that maybe maybe he wasn't gonna get it. You know, once I started reading the scorecards, I was like, oh man, they're not gonna they're not gonna give it to him. It's gonna be tough. And I I legitimately legitimately thought that the judges were going to to award the decision to uh, to Johnson, and it didn't turn out that way. So it was it was quite the surprise. So uh, so yeah, we're looking at those six fights. Of those six, only two did not go the distance. Uh, that was on Sehudo's side with uh, Dillashaw and uh, Marlon Moraes. Now. As I mentioned earlier, I've kind of gone back and forth on this particular fight because I am a fan of both of them. Um, my instinct is to go with Sehudo. He's he's the most he's more more active. He's fought most recently, and and he's a champion. You know he's he's um, uh, he's the favorite. He's going to be the odds on favorite. Um, so that was my instinct. I said, you know what, I think Sehudo's going to take this. But I had to take a step back and and maybe analyze it a little bit um, after after analyzing it, maybe over analyzing it. Um, I, I kind of feel, I know this is going to sound really weird and maybe even ignorant, but I feel like Sehudo is not going to be able to take Cruz down. Now, hear me out. Um, granted, I, I know that sounds a little strange considering Sehudo is a, uh, Olympic, um, Olympic medalist, uh, freestyle wrestling. Um, and, and you know, he, he always gets to take down, right? Whenever he needs to get take down, he gets to take down. Uh, I think that. Because Dominic Cruz's uh, footwork is is so fast and he's so light on his feet, and he too comes from a wrestling background, maybe not as much, obviously not as elite, not on the world cl world class level like Sehudo. But I feel like he's going to be light enough on his feet. And keep in mind, this is not a wrestling match. This is a mixed martial arts fight where there's punches and kicks and knees and elbows. And uh, the more refined striker is Cruz. I think that Cruz. Is going to be able to keep uh, Sehudo at distance. He's going to keep him at bay. He's going to be able to pepper him with jabs and kicks. He's going to be a little too fast. So you guys already see where I'm going with this. Um, if we see the old Dominic Cruz, if Dominic Cruz in his mind really believes that there's no such thing as ring rust, and he comes into this fight fighting like there's no ring rust, um, then we may see the old Dominic Cruz. If that's the case, and some part of me is hoping that it really is the case. I'm going to have to go with uh, with Dominic Cruz. 
So that is going to be my prediction. Um, considering the majority of these fights have gone the distance, I think this fight will, will also go the full five rounds. I'm going to call it a split decision for Dominic Cruz. He's going to win his title back and um, I guess be the only three-time Bantamweight champion. Holy shit. Uh, so yeah, that is my uh, final prediction on that one. It's going to be Dominic Cruz by split decision. Moving on to the main event, uh, we are looking at Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, I was a pretty big fan of, uh, um, I am a pretty big fan of Cejudo and Cruz's, and to some extent, uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to that fight more than the main event, but holy fuck, this main event with Ferguson and Gaethje, damn, damn, I, I there's a lot, this is a high, high risk fight for, uh, for Ferguson, um, this is going to be a tough one. You know, I, I again, I went back and forth. I, I, over, I analyzed it and I overanalyzed it. And um, this is this is kind of the closest thing that I'm able to come up with. So um, uh, looking at these fighters, uh, most recent three fights, we're going to start first with, uh, well, I was going to say the challenger, Gage G, but I guess they're both challengers. As a matter of fact, this is for the interim title, for the interim lightweight title, uh, which I forgot to mention. Um, if Ferguson wins, I think it's going to be the only fighter in UFC history to win the interim title twice <laughs> in any weight division. Um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of saying like, hey, you're the second best two times. It's kind of fucking sucks. But, uh, of course, this is not because he wasn't able to beat Khabib. It's because we can't get both of them in the damn cage at the same time. And if he loses this fight, chances are we're not going to get it. So it's a real, real high-risk fight uh, for uh, for Ga or, I'm sorry, for Ferguson. And Gaethje's coming in with pretty much nothing to lose, really. So, all right. So we're looking at um, <clears throat> their three most recent fights. We're going to start first with Gaethje, which is uh, Donald Cerrone. Um, uh, he won that fight by TKO. Uh, this was in September of 2019. It was a pretty pretty short fight. Um, he, uh, I mean, we didn't really we didn't really see anything different from Gaethje. We know Gaethje is uh, uh, number one. He's got a hell of a fucking chin. I mean, a hell of a chin. Every time, like, you know, my dad is a fan, but like he doesn't remember the fighters as much as I do. Like I give him a name, and my dad's like, like I don't remember his name. Show me his face, and when I show him, he's like, oh yeah, that guy. Every time, you know, every time I mention it, it's like, oh yeah, Gaethje. He's like, oh Gaethje, fuck yeah. So he remembers. We see these fights, and he and every time I, we we talk about it, he's like, man, that guy can take a freaking punch. And um, you know, he did take a few punches against Cerrone, but you know, he took them and he took Cerrone out. All right. Prior to that, uh, again, another KO win against uh, Edison Barbosa. This was in March of 2019. Uh, so he's been pretty active. Knocking people out. Um, he's got, if I recall correctly, was this? Yeah, I think it was with a right hook on that one when uh, um, Barbosa was trying to to uh, to kind of circle away. But um, same thing, you know. That was uh, that fight was actually pretty fun to watch. Well, all of his fights are fun to watch. But uh, revisiting some of these fights, how they were exchanging leg kicks, that was pretty cool. Actually, it was it was very uh, <laughs> it was very blood sport. You know, when Van Dam is like, come on, kick, kick, come on, and then he throws a kick, and then he's like, ah, right. That's kind of what it reminded me of. Him and Barbosa were just trading leg kicks. It was pretty cool, uh, but um, ultimately, you know, he got the, the TKO victory, uh, or a KO victory, actually. He's going to go down in the record books as a knockout, uh, and then also the fight before that one against James Vick. This was in August of 2018. Uh, same thing, another first round KO, like KO. He threw like this one, one two that landed perfectly, and um, he did follow up with an extra punch, but by that point, the referee was already jumping in. So, uh, looking at these three most recent fights, they were all wins. Uh, they were all KOs or TKOs. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Justin Gaethje doesn't like to go the distance, huh? All right, so moving on to his uh, his opponent and uh, the favorite, Tony Ferguson, El Cucuy. Um, His most recent fight uh, was coincidentally also against Donald Cerrone. Uh, that fight was a little bit more even. You know, he took, he took a few shots. Um... One of the things that I was taking in, in, into consideration was uh, how much punishment um, Ferguson can take. Uh, he's been hurt and he's been stunned a few times, uh, but I'm going to actually get into that a little bit later on. So uh, so his most recent fight was against Donald Cerrone, a victory uh, in June of 2019. Prior to that, it was a TKO win, officially TKO against uh, Anthony Pettis in uh, October of 2018. Uh, that was, I believe, when... Um, I mean, he was winning the fight. You know, he was. But uh, I think it was... Um, Pettis like hurt broke his something. I, you know, always it's always something, right? Broke his foot, broke his hand. I don't even remember what the hell it was, or his rib, or whatever the fuck it is. But one reason or another, he wasn't able to continue, and he pretty much I don't want to use the word quit, so I I'm, I'm trying not to use that word. But he he was on his stool, and he quit his stool, pretty much on his stool. 
in between rounds. Um, before that, he fought Kevin Lee, which is which is another tough fight. Uh, that was also a victory that came by triangle choke. That was in uh, October of 2017. So taking a look at all of these six fights, none of them went the distance, which is pretty pretty telling. Uh, it pretty much shows you how uh, how their fight is going to to end up. Now, um, earlier I mentioned uh, Tony Ferguson and, and taking some of the punches that he's taken in his most recent fights. Um, Ferguson, he could take a punch. Yes, absolutely, he can take a punch. Obviously, right? Because he's been hurt. He's been hurt a few times actually, pretty pretty badly. Uh, and one one which was uh, one of which was against Pettis. Uh, but he persevered. He was able to buy himself some time, shake off the cobwebs, and he came back stronger. Now. Uh, this is this is the part where I've kind of gone back and forth. Um, I don't know if Ferguson has enough power to hurt Gaethje on the feet. I'm pretty sure Gaethje has enough power to hurt Ferguson. Um, Ferguson's defense isn't all that great. He's there to be hit, and he has been hit. Uh, I don't know if he's been hit with anybody who hits as hard as Justin, but um, that, that does not look too good for him. Um, uh, I was thinking about whether or not he would be able to take Gaethje's punch. Um, considering his defense isn't that good, um, he does come forward a lot, you know, and uh, and you don't have to chase him. You don't have to chase him unless he's hurt, of course, then he, he backpedals. But otherwise, he comes forward. You don't have to go looking for him. He's kind of the perfect opponent for Gaethje. So I was thinking about it, and uh, I was trying to picture how Gaethje would win. I think the only way he would win is by TKO or KO. Um, but who the hell's gonna knock out Ferguson? Like that sounds kind of it sounds kind of far fetched, right? That Ferguson's gonna get knocked the fuck out. But maybe it can happen. Uh one other thing I do want to mention, um with uh with Gaethje, um he really likes to throw late kicks. Like he does throw a lot of late kicks. Um like I mentioned earlier with his fight against Barbosa. Um and considering that um, Ferguson's left leg is the one that was uh, that was injured that he had the surgery on, and that's going to be his lead leg. Well, I mean, Ferguson does uh, switch stances, but for the most part, he stays in an orthodox stance, leaving his left leg forward. Um, and if it's there, we can pretty much guarantee that Gaethje is going to kick it, like kick the living fuck out of it. So um, that's that's another thing to take in, into consideration coming into this fight. Um, furthermore. Um, I don't know. I mean, Ferguson's most recent fight was in June of 9th of 2019, and Gaethje's was in September. So Gaethje's was the most recent fight, or he, he was the most recent. Uh, he was active most recently. I'm trying to say, and I don't know if that's going to play uh, a role um, because I, I think about I think about Ferguson's knee. Like from the time that he was injured to the time he came back, it was was like six or seven months. It was like something crazy, and that's like damn near unheard of. So who the hell knows how that knee healed now i was thinking about something uh if uh, for those of you guys who are who are uh, fight fans uh saw recently this fight was, or i guess not this fight but him and uh, khabib was supposed to oh actually no i take that back it was this fight actually that was originally scheduled that didn't happen last week or the week before that um ferguson made weight anyway uh he made the 155 pound weight limit Friday. It was a Friday before when the fight should have taken place, and uh, he posted it on his social media. Now, for those of you who are, are um, who may not be too familiar with uh, with cutting weight or, or making weight for a fight, when a fighter goes through um, through training camp, their conditioning, their cardio, it peaks. It peaks at a certain time, six, seven weeks, whatever. So when a fighter knows when a fight, when their their next scheduled fight is, they try to time it, time their training schedule to where uh, they peak as close to fight day as possible um, they can't stay up there for the for, for too long uh, there is this danger of overtraining where you're even though you're on weight uh, your body is just not reacting your reflex is slow you, you you're no longer at your peak um, once you hit your peak you kind of have to come back down and rest for your next fight to come back up that's just that's the cycle um, he did make weight i don't know if he struggled to make weight or not but he did it I don't know if that was such a smart move because we are talking about a couple of weeks later and he's going to have to now make weight again. Um, I don't know if he's going to be in the tip top shape. Maybe he'll be able to make weight, but I, I'm a little concerned of the overtraining. I don't know if he took any time off afterwards after he made weight, which he probably shouldn't have done anyway. But I mean, maybe he'll prove me wrong because 
he is a very, very unique guy. He's a unique athlete. He's an animal. Um, so, so who knows? Maybe that had nothing to do. Maybe that won't affect him whatsoever. I kind of feel like it will because he did peak. He made 155 pounds. Maybe he's on the way down. Maybe he can still make 155 without a problem, but I'm not sure if his conditioning is going to be there. Um, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be able to peak again, in other words, so soon without the danger of overtraining. Um, so I probably rambled on a little bit longer than I wanted to there. But um, moving on, um, I, I have thought about this a few times. Uh, I tried picturing Justin Gaethje knocking Ferguson out, and that seems a little, a little far-fetched. However... I do, I started to picture, well, if Ferguson, I don't know if Ferguson's going to be able to knock Gaethje out because I don't know if he has the power to, but he can submit him, right? Because his his Dars choke is one of his like favorite moves. Um, his fight with, uh, with Kevin Lee uh, ended in a triangle choke. So a, a submission is pretty, is pretty plausible. So after thinking about it and after going back and forth, um, I've, I'm going to go with my prediction here. Uh, this is not not just with the hopes of possibly fighting Khabib eventually, but I think turn of Tony Ferguson is going to take this one. I think he's going to, at some point, the fight is going to go to the ground, and I suspect that he's going to be able to catch Gaethje in a submission, and I think it's going to be his favorite submission that um, uh, that darts. Um, so uh, that that is probably the most likely scenario that I can picture in my mind of how this fight ending. Because considering Gaethje knocked out his last three opponents, I don't know if he's going to do that with Ferguson. Because like I said, it so sounds far-fetched as hell, Ferguson getting knocked the fuck out. Yes, he has been hurt. He's been able to overcome it. He's been able to, uh, to come back. Um, but I don't know if he's been hit with somebody who's as powerful as Gaethje. Um, but... By that same token, I guess, well, I should say the flip side to that is I, I can picture Ferguson submitting Gaethje. I can. Um, I think that's the most likely scenario, actually. So I'm, I'm going to go with Tony Ferguson by uh, Dars, uh, Darce or DRS, however you want to call it, choke. Um, I suspect that it's going to come in the middle rounds, maybe uh, mid to late third round is where uh, Ferguson is going to be able to catch him. Um I mean, I'm, 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 I try to be as specific as possible with my predictions, and usually the round never occurs, but um, I'm going to say it's going to be a triangle, or I'm sorry, it's going to be a Dars choke, and uh, Tony Ferguson is going to become a uh, interim champion once again, lightly champion, and hopefully we have this future showdown uh, with, uh, with Khabib. Um, that's the intent, at least. All right, guys, not to make this video any longer than it already is. I'm going to try to edit it so it'll be a little bit shorter. Um, thanks for uh, for stopping by and checking out my video. Uh, by the way, sorry I look a little look a little scruffy. Uh, you know, working from home, uh, you know, you don't really feel like shaving. You get a little lazy. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm probably the next time you see me, uh, I'll be a little more clean shaven. Um, but uh, on that note, um, I'm going to try to post another video um, next week. Uh, I'm going to try to make it like a weekly thing where I'm able to post maybe at least one video every week. So if you can, please uh, come back, check out uh, my next video. Uh, chances are my next video will be boxing related. Uh, I try to do that where it's like boxing, MMA, boxing, MMA, boxing, MMA, and continue that way. So, uh, so yeah, if you guys can, please uh, make it back next week for another video. I'm not sure what I'm going to do it on yet, but... Regardless, thank you for stopping by and checking this one out. Uh, feel free to follow me on uh, on Instagram uh, at Fight Fiend Migs. And here, of course, like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, and, you know, by all means, uh, give me your predictions on uh, UFC 249. Uh, thank you once more for, uh, for checking my video out. And uh, you guys have yourselves a good night. Peace. Here coming at you with a new video. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping by and checking it out. Uh, before I get started, uh, just like last week, I hope you guys are doing well and are staying safe. Uh, following all the instructions and following the orders and staying home, wearing your masks and all that good stuff, washing your hands and touching your face like I'm not doing right now. Fuck. <laughs>